is a woman who's been a powerful force here in North Carolina for well over a decade. You've probably seen her on TV as the creator and host of, Sh of Charlotte Alive. She's the go-to media personality for faith-based causes in and around the Charlotte area and made a very strong impression on me from our very first conversation. It was clear this lady was strong, smart, and on a mandate from God to bring love and healing. During the campaign, she was asked to join the Women for Trump bus tour with the Congressional Wives of North Carolina. Please give a warm welcome for the one and only Donica Hudson. what I am a Matthews mama I live right here in Matthews and it is a joy and an honor to be able to talk to my neighbors thanks for coming out today and I just want to say what a beautiful day that God gave us and what wonderful music what incredible uh, rally that's been put together by Chris and Michelle and the team this is amazing. This is what we need in our country to bring unity and healing so that we can go forward with the current administration and make America great again. Anybody ever heard of Winget? <laughs> you can tell I'm a native of Winget. I grew up there. My dad, Don Perry, was the county attorney for 13 years here in Union County. My mom was the first woman elected to the Union County Board of Education in the 70s and the first woman to be chairman. And I tell you all that to say, our roots here go deep. My family has always cared about the people here in Union County and in our country, just like the current administration. And Donald Trump and his administration care about you, they care about me, and they care about our future. We know that his policies are bringing us safer schools, lower taxes, more jobs, more economic growth, and safer communities. As Michelle said, I had the honor of traveling with the Congressional Wives out of Washington, D.C. to speak in North Carolina, and it was the week before the election. And you guys know that our state was the key swing state. So I want to thank you for coming out, coming to the polls, and bringing the victory to Donald Trump. You showed up. You know, I want to tell you, at every stop along the way in North Carolina, what I found was so encouraging. It was people like you. It was a grassroots movement. People who were sick and tired of being silenced, who wanted to have a voice, and were tired of the political correctness. And that's why we won, because of you, people like you, and other communities nearby that had the guts to stand up, even in the face of opposition, and vote for Donald Trump. Now, I heard some of you speak, and you haven't met Donald Trump, and you know what? That's even more of a testament that you are able to see that the policies that he's already been implementing are working. Yeah. yeah. What a great first 100 days we're in, huh? Um, what I, I wanted to tell you though, I did get the opportunity to meet Donald Trump several times, was at a round table with him and with Eric and Laura, and they are genuine people. I could, Donald Trump listened to what I had to say. He didn't pass me by, just like he's listening to you and to the people, we the people of America, and implementing what we need to be safer and more prosperous in our country and in our community. You know, I also met Mike and Karen Pence, and I'm gonna tell you what, you can't get any better than Mike and Karen Pence. They are wonderful, God-fearing Americans. <laughs> and it was a pleasure to be at different rallies in North Carolina and supporting them and speaking on that tour. And Trump has continued to pick incredible choices for cabinet, for all of his appointments, for judges. And so we need to continue to stick behind him. And now is not the time to be silent. We must continue on, because as you know, we still have opposition on every turn. 
In fact, there's a rally going on right now in Raleigh, and they have um, some, some real heat that they're dealing with. I thank God that our community is united, because our desire, I'm part of the Legislative Prayer Caucus in North Carolina and in the nation, and our desire is to see our communities united, to see healing come to our land, to dispel the darkness, to dispel all fear, where we can reach across different divides and agree and work together and support the current administration. And that's what this rally is doing. And if we will continue on, God will be with us to strengthen us and bring us to a place of solid security and victory. You know, great American presidents and leaders like Abraham Lincoln, Ronald Reagan, and Martin Luther King, they encourage us as we stand for civil covenants and freedom, like the Declaration of Independence and the Emancipation Proclamation. Now we know from history that these guys were professed Christians, so we can expect that they're in heaven and they are cheering us on from the cloud of witnesses toward unity, freedom, and the rebuilding of a great country for which they risked their lives. That's okay, the flags might fall, but we are still victorious. <laughs> Donald Trump chose to be sworn in on two Bibles, one from his mama and one from Abraham Lincoln. Now, Abe Lincoln is one of the most godly pillars of American freedom in this country. No one knew more what it took to make America great again than Abe Lincoln, who guided our country through his worst bloodbath of civil war, abolished slavery, and began the rebuilding process in America again. Now, what I'm about to say, I want you to get out your phones. <laughs> Tape me, put it on social media, because most people don't know this, and it's very important. Donald Trump is of the same ilk as Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King. I'm gonna say that again. Donald Trump is of the same ilk as Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King began his I have a dream speech by referring to Lincoln, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today, who signed the Emancipation Proclamation abolishing slavery. I am appalled that the media has painted Trump as a racist with their fake news. That's right. I want my many Jewish friends and my many black friends who have been afraid because of the lies of a liberal media to hear this. You have an advocate in Donald J. Trump. He is not a racist. He is your advocate. He is a man appointed by God who answers to God, as all leaders placed in authority do. Now listen to this story that we shared on the Women for Trump bus tour. And you tell me if this man sounds like a racist. Donald Trump, you all know, has a resort called Mar-a-Lago, right? So when he was trying to build this, he had great opposition. He forced Palm Beach to accept blacks and Jews when he built his Mar-a-Lago resort. This was before he was in politics. At the time, in the 1990s, the liberals in Palm Beach wouldn't allow blacks and Jews to join golf clubs there. Talk about bigotry and racism. The city of Palm Beach fought hard against Trump for allowing both blacks and Jews to come to his resort. But what did Trump do? Now this is classic Trump. He sends a movie. Guess who's coming to dinner? Starring Sidney Poitier to the entire city council. And this movie, in case you don't know the story, a lot of you do because you're a more older generation like me. Um, <laughs> this deals with upper class racism. He was putting them in their place. And then he sued the city of Palm Beach using his own money. He sued them for $100 million to get his course approved and for blacks and Jews to be able to go to that resort. Now, do you think the media reported this at all? No, of course not. But you and we the people, we can use social media and we can circulate this and let people know. Donald Trump finally won. He won that lawsuit and all the other courses in Miami were forced to desegregate. He was a wrecking ball. He 
it was a wrecking ball to the snobby upper class racist establishment there, just like he is now on a national level. Biblically speaking, Trump also wrecked the anti-Semitism of witchcraft in Palm Beach. Now he's doing it on a national level. <laughs> the left is scared and demons are trembling. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. If you're part of the left, and if you've been scared, you don't have to be afraid. That's the beauty of Donald Trump. Women, you don't have to be afraid either. Donald Trump has given great liberty to women. Trump appointed more women than men to executive positions in his company. Michael Cohen, his lawyer, talked about that. Of course, the media doesn't want to tell you that either, do they? <laughs> he, appointed, he has appointed a woman pastor as his spiritual leader. I heard Pastor Paula speak in the late 90s when my husband and I lived in California for a brief stint. And that's when she began talking to Donald and Melania. They have a long-standing friendship and mutual respect. The God who created us knows how to preserve us, and he has put Donald Trump in power for such a time as this. <laughs> I want to tell you, and you know this, we are entering into a time of great reversal. Yeah. Trump is draining the swamp. <laughs> We're going to see secured borders and drug cartels fold. <laughs> We're going to see safe schools again. How about that? As a mama here in Matthews that has three kids in school, I really want to know that my kids are safe. How about you? We're going to see astronomical national debt turned into profit. We're going to see riots in the streets eradicated as we Americans embrace our creed that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, we're going to see the re-establishment of the American dream, where every U.S. citizen has equal opportunity to achieve success and prosperity through hard work, determination, and initiative. We're seeing jobs brought back to America. We're going to have a strong military again. How about you veterans out there? Woo Hey, I was born on an Air Force base. I appreciate our military and so does Donald Trump. I remember when we were at uh, one of the rallies in the western part of the state, he took extra time. They were pulling on him. He wanted to shake every veteran's hand. And he wasn't just passing them by. He was staring them in the face and listening to what they said. This man cares. He knows what needs changing in this country. And he's not afraid to call terror, terror. We're going to see ice is eradicated, and that's his words. We're going to return to the way our forefathers intended government to run by upholding the Constitution. And no, it's not changing. The judicial branch will not legislate, and neither will the Department of Education. We will not see states' rights usurped by a runaway federal government. We will regain respect again on the global level with the commander in chief who will not bow to other gods, other countries, and the pressure to join a one world system. Yeah. Trump cares about our country, our state, and our city. Yeah, little old Matthews. The week after the Charlotte riots, Eric and Laura Trump, and Laura is a North Carolina girl, by the way, they gathered the clergy in Charlotte to see what their father could do to help make us safe again. And I was at that meeting. He did that because he cares. And he did that in multiple cities that were experiencing types of trauma. America is still in shock because we actually have a president who is a public servant. He cares about we the people. We have a commander-in-chief who represents America only, and we have a very bright future. I'm excited. <laughs> we are again one nation under God, and it's not politically incorrect to say that. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I just want to close us in a short prayer because I can. <laughs> and because you can. Lord, I thank you for these people. I thank you for my brothers and sisters and my neighbors. I thank you that you have made a way for our communities to be safe. God, you're the God that created us all, and you're the God that loves us all, God. We trust you. 
We ask that you would protect Donald Trump. Lord, your word tells us that we are to pray for all those in authority over us because you put them there. Lord, we pray that Donald Trump and his administration would legislate on earth as it is in heaven. We pray, God, that you would unite us once and for all as one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Did I tell you she was impressive? She's amazing. I love her. I love you, Donica. And uh, Donica, you did it again. The wind was blowing. <laughs> <laughs>